Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, back with another episode of The Magnificent Seven Rides again. Today, I'm absolutely thrilled to have back Deanna Heitzman. Deanna, first of all, welcome back. Thank you. It's always so good to be here and visiting with you. So, Deanna, could you tell us how you got into art? I don't remember a day that I wasn't into art. Even as a little kid, we lived out in the country. Mom and dad didn't have a lot of money. My dad worked for the local light company, which, and mom stayed at home. And so my source of entertainment was being outside with the animals and the trees. And we lived under these huge pecan trees. So I just remember days going out there and, and we were close enough to the Gulf where you could see the trees sway and the, the clouds shift and move. And that always captivated my interest. And so a lot of times we would just sit there staring or laying on the ground under a big pecan tree watching these things or out playing with the cows <laughs> and the animals that I had. That was just a part of who I was. And so a lot of times in the evening or when it was too hot, we'd go in and we'd color or draw or use charcoal and even pastels or actually they weren't really pastels. They were cheap form of chalks. That's what we did. It's just what I did. Did you take art in school before college? I've always done art and my teachers recognized it early on in elementary kindergarten. The teachers would come up and go, we need this. You draw it. And so the, you draw it always was there. I can remember my first grade teacher going, taking a special interest in what I did. And she did a small drawing and she gave it to me and she wrote on there. And I still have that to this day because it meant so much to me that she recognized my abilities so soon and so early. That's something I try to, always do when young people are working around me is recognize that and make sure that they know that they're incredible. You were also an athlete in high school and college. I was, yeah. And so do you see your athletics as a part of an extension of your art or is it something, a different part of your brain? That's really a good question. No, I totally, I love the human body. I did a little bodybuilding. I love the forms, the shape of the muscles, watching animals run, horses, dogs. I mean, just to see the movement of their muscles in motion captivates me, always has. And I think it's just another form and a beauty that God has created that it just captures me. So in many ways, it's a part of me and my artistic movement or flow or whatever, but it is also a separation to where it gives me a chance to get out and move my body. And I don't know if it's really a separation now that I'm saying this out loud. I love the body and how it works and watching the muscles form and shape. You certainly draw animals. I love drawing animals. That's probably my passion. Yeah. I can see them 3D in my mind when I'm doing it. I can feel them. I, I can close my eyes and feel the shape of their eyes and their face. And I one day may start sculpting just because I love that. And so with them, when I'm painting them and draw them, I can see the darkness in the, how the flesh wraps around the bone and the muscles and how it creates the shadows and the highlights and the movement. It's, yeah, I love it. So I met you on July 4th yes. of 2021 yes, at the first on art fair. By that time, were you full-time artist? Uh, yes, I had been doing it full-time. I had not done very many shows prior to that. But in 17 is kind of when it took a little bit of a turn. I had ran Blue Sage as a wedding and event venue. And in the downtime, I would do sip and paint classes. And it was really fun because I would paint paintings that were somewhat simplified and then paint it again in front of people, teaching them how to see form and shape and colors, how to make brush strokes. And it made me a better artist, just like coaching made me a better player. To take people through that walk of how to do things for the first time when they didn't believe they could do it was always a fascinating thing to me. So I really was doing art full time at that point, but through sip and paints. And then that allowed me to be in the studio and to paint more. And I just painted my pets and all of a sudden people were asking for pet portraits and it gave me a chance to just kind of really dive back into my art like I once was. What about the year of the pandemic? Did you did it give you the opportunity to plant yourself in your studio and paint? Or did people call up and say, we still need art? Or how did that work for you? Luckily, people, I started getting some traction. I was doing the trade days out in Fredericksburg at the time. And so I met a lot of people. And they given out business cards and marketing yourself by talking to people that came in and inviting questions. 
people remembered. And so they would reach out to me and ask me to do pet portraits. And the U.S. mail is a great thing. <laughs> it is a great thing. Before we got started, you were talking about walking, if not through the woods, walking where there is flora and plants and not just seeing it, but feeling it. Could yes. you tell us a little bit about that and, and why you do that or how you do it and well, what that means to your art? Sure. I guess I really didn't recognize that I had done that until I had gone uh, on vacation with a couple other ladies. And as we had walked, they noticed that I was touching and feeling everything and that I would stop and look at things. And they're like, do you do that all the time? And I'm like, do what? And they're like, you're touching all the plants and you're feeling the flowers. And I'm like, I guess I didn't realize I did that. And so, yes, I'm weird. I, I like to touch everything and see everything. Yes, I do all the time. I found myself this year, you've, you've talked several times uh, about the greenery and the beauty of the amount of rain, what it's done for our flora in the area. I'll stop on the side of the road and get out my phone and take pictures and videos and take it back into the studio and look at it and take something from this picture and that video and combine everything and do my own thing with it. <laughs> I tell people, you ladies have absolutely ruined me because as I drive through, I live in Tierra Linda. So as I drive through Tierra Linda, I see all of the shades mm. of green, all the layering mm -hmm. of the plants and literally from the grasses to the treetops. Yeah. Have you noticed the shadows and how the, the shadows reflect the blue around you? It's not really black. It's a deep blue that it starts bringing into your greens. And yeah, that's just part of it. I'm glad that you're seeing it that way. That's kind of fun. <laughs> you also, you mentioned already about sharing your art and sharing art with children, but it doesn't stop with children for you. No. You share it with some people, some women who have been horribly abused and you share it with others. So could you tell us? What's your, what's this passion for sharing of art? Sure. Yes, I do. I do as what I call creating with the creator. And it's basically exploring our creativity that we all have in us. It's an innate, it's, it's, we were born with it. If you're, if you believe in the Bible, it says that we were created like God. And so if we, in God's image, in, in his image, and so if we're created in his image and he created, that means we have the ability to create. So your creation or your ability to create may look different. You may be a, a singer. You may be somebody that bakes. I mean, somebody that talks well, somebody that understands the law. Well, there's so many forms of creativity. I think everybody has that. I feel like that a lot of times it's been crushed when we were young through a word, somebody saying something, somebody going, oh, that's not good. It could even be a little kid next to you. But for some reason, we grab a hold of that and believe the lie. And so working with these women who have been horribly abused, it allows them to explore a little deeper, to forget about who they are, where they've, the things they've been through, and to think at a different level what's really in them and how they see themselves and how most importantly, how God sees them. And so through walking them through prayer and doing things to get, one of the first things we do is to get everything off their mind and on a piece of paper. So we do a lot of writing or scribbling or whatever it looks like to you. And everything that's on their mind when they walk into my room, I ask them just to write it all down. And then what I do is I say, okay, you've written everything down. So your mind is free and open to hear the Lord speak to you. So now you have a choice that with that sheet of paper, with all that stuff that you wrote down on it, that you can destroy it. You can give it to God, or you can pick it up when you walk out of the room. But right now we're removing that from you and we're allowing yourself to hear and feel what God has to say to you. And it's amazing with the things that they come up with and the beauty in it. And for people, some of these girls have never painted and we don't just paint. We do collage. We do different things, <clears throat> but some of these girls have never painted and they're amazed at what they see and what they do and the freedom that they now feel inside of them because they were able to release whatever it is on their heart to a different level. It's precious. I certainly had known the phrase, man is created in God's image all my life. I have never heard anyone focus on the word created. 
Mm. Could you say a few more words about that as yeah. opposed to the image of? Yeah, certainly the image of is huge, but in the beginning, God created. And in my opinion, if you believe God created and we were created in his image, to me, that means we also are creative. And like I explained, creativity can look in many different ways. But if we're creative, that means everything God has in him, he has transferred or given to us. And it's our choice to do something with it or not. And sometimes we just don't know how. And so I like to, through this creating with the creator, open up opportunities for people to learn how. I just did a series last night. We had 20, 20 women and Several of them had told me, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never painted. That's okay. Let me walk you through it. Just listen to me. Let me take you through it step by step. And some of the beautiful things, one lady, she, she told me, she goes, I've never painted before in my life. I don't know what I'm doing. It's okay. We got this. So I want you to pray and ask God for three colors. And she's okay. So she did. She chose purple and red. And I gave her white. I gave everybody white so you can get different variations of colors from that. And as she painted, she goes, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'll give a few demos. And with my hands, we use acrylic paint and I'll take white and I'll teach him how to add a darker color to a lighter color so that you get many shades. You can start off light and work dark. And I explain to him a couple of things and just some basics with painting and so she worked all night and she kind of had her canvas where I couldn't really see things. And she kind of kept to herself with her canvas to everybody so that the back of the canvas was to everybody where they couldn't see it. And sometimes we're not very secure in what we do. And as she painted, you could just see her facial features and her, everything just shifted. She just got very comfortable. And it was such a reverence in the room with 20 women. And it's hard to believe that they weren't all talking, but there was such a reverence in the room for the creative process and their time with God. And when she was done, I asked people to share and gave them opportunity. And I was able to look at this painting and see things in her. And she, she shared with me a little bit and she had a heart. She had this turmoil looking like stuff going on the top with the reds and the blues. And it just looked kind of crazy, like a real angry red and blue cloud. And then there was this shape. And it looked like mountains to me. And then she had this heart with radiant lines coming out. And uh, so I asked her, she goes, I just feel like God opened up my heart tonight. I'm like, that's awesome. She goes, yeah, I feel like he opened up my heart to something new. And so I asked her if I could share what I saw. And she said, yes. And I'm like, I feel like that you're a beautiful woman, but that you've been through a lot of turbulent times. And, and this area just makes me feel like you've gone through a lot of struggles in life. But yet you've come over the mountains because I see this as mountains and that you're allowing God to shine in your life and you're radiating to others his love. And she started weeping. But she did. And she I bet was, you started weeping. Of course. <laughs> I'm a big crybaby sometime. <laughs> but she was like, oh, my goodness, I couldn't put that into words, but you put it into words for me. And I'm like, that's because it came out of you on canvas and you allowed yourself the freedom to just express yourself. She's wow. And so we did that with everyone that was willing to, and it was just a, an amazing night. I'd like to turn to the Magnificent Seven Rides again. Sure. What is the Magnificent Seven Rides again? It's a group of seven awesome women that paint <laughs> or that do some form of art. Yeah, it's a group of us. We all kind of started off with a, the group that you saw originally back in Hunt, and it's kind of grown to include a few others in the Kerrville area. We all are creative. Elaine had a great idea to get us together because there was an opportunity or an opening in the schedule at the Cultural Arts Center. And so she just started reaching out and asking people to paint. And I was probably the stubborn one saying, I don't have time. I'm too busy. And then she talked to me into it. I'm glad. I'm very thankful that she talked to me into it. And uh, we just kind of got together and we showed our work. It's such a great support group, though. It's so much more than just artists getting together, showing work. It's a support group. We've gotten to where we encourage each other, talk to each other, share ideas, give critiques if it's so needed or wanted. And we have fun. I mean, we all are kind of quirky. We understand each other's quirks, and that's kind of fun. <laughs> when is the show this year? It's coming up. Uh, I know that intake is on the 9th, and I believe it's the 14th. 
that uh, we have the artist reception. So everybody needs to come to that because you have an opportunity to meet us and ask us in person what we were thinking when we painted something. And it's just a great time. You get to know us personally. You can look around and see everybody's artwork. Yeah, it's from two to five, I believe, on the 14th at the Cultural Arts Center. So could you maybe give us a hint or two of some pieces you're working on for this year's show? Yeah, I always do animals. That's my thing. And landscapes, just, yeah, I love nature. And so I think this year I am trying to include more than just one animal in a painting, although there's definitely solos. (laughs) But a lot of my landscapes are including animals in them or it's always animals. <laughs> Tom, you know that. <laughs> I, eyes, the eyes of the animal, the eyes are windowed to the soul. I think that's in the case in the animals too. I have a couple pieces of landscapes with horses in the foreground and buffaloes fighting and just fun stuff. <laughs> so what, one of the things that intrigued me about last year's show was seeing young children come through and it may be the first time they had seen fine art. It may be the the closest physically they had ever been to fine art. What would you say to the eight-year-old girl or eight-year-old boy who's just standing there with their eyes wide open? Mm. I love that because that happens at art shows a lot. The little ones will come into my booth and they'll just stare and go, mom, it looks real. And then, so I'll engage them and I'll just ask them about it. Are you an artist? Do you want to be an artist? What do you like about it? What do you like to do? And just ask questions and then encourage them. Just like my teacher encouraged me in first grade, I will ask them questions and get them talking to me. And when there's a a relationship built, then I'll uh, give them suggestions of what to do to help him grow their art ability and encourage them in using color. And what is it that you do have at home that you can use? And if they have crayons, I'll maybe suggest ways of holding the crayons or how to blend the crayons or something fun, or if they have paint encourage them about blending colors and stepping outside of the box. I don't like it when people put people in a box and it's an artistic thing just because there is no box in art. Uh, Deanna, unfortunately, we're near the end of our time for this episode. But before we leave, if our listeners wanted to actually see some of your art (laughs) or find out more about your art, is there a place they could go? Absolutely. I have a website. It's DeannaEichsman.com. Instagram. I'm really good at keeping up with Instagram and Facebook, and it's just Deanna Eichsman Art. Great, Deanna. Uh, I'm greatly looking forward to this year's show. Oh, and it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for having me again. All right.